good morning students myself dr prema te akkasaligar working as professor and pg coordinator in the department of computer science bld engineering college vijaypur about the shortest job first scheduling algorithm it is based on the length of the processes next cpu burst cycle when the cpu is available it is Uh, assigned to a process that has smallest next cpu burst cycle if the next cpu burst of two processes are, are same then first come first serve uh, algorithm is used to break the tie so it is known as shortest job first scheduling algorithm because the process the processes in the ready queue which has the smallest Uh, cpu burst cycle that is allocated with the cpu first here and it comes uh, it comes with both non preemptive algorithm and preemptive algorithm so currently we'll discuss about non preemptive algorithm in the slide number 3 we have an example for shortest job first scheduling algorithm of non preemptive version here there are four processes with the uh, shown burst times so according to the grant chart uh, p4 is allocated with the cpu first because it has uh, shortest burst time among all the four processes next shortest time is 6 millisecond of p1 so p1 is allocated with the cpu then next uh, shortest burst time is 7 millisecond of p3 so it is shown after p1 in the gantt chart then at the end uh, p2 is allocated with the cpu now if you come find out the uh, waiting time for all the four processes for p1 it is 3 millisecond for p2 it is uh, 16 milliseconds for p3 it is 9 milliseconds and p4 it is 0 milliseconds if you take the average waiting time of all the four processes then it comes to be 7 millisecond so uh, among the set of these three processes compared with uh, first come first first come first scheduling algorithm the this sjf results into an optimal solution because with the same four processes if you calculate the average waiting time using fcfs algorithm then it gives the average waiting time as 10.25 millisecond whereas here we are getting the average waiting time of 7 millisecond so compared with that we can say it is better but the disadvantage is of this method is knowing the length of the next cpu burst cycle advantage is it is easily used in long term scheduling the next cpu burst is generally predicted by an exponential average uh, of measured length of previous cpu burst cycles as it is shown in uh, slide 4 it is defined with the formula having tau and tn where tn represents the actual length of nth cpu burst tau n plus 1 is predicted value of the next cpu burst cycle normally we consider the next cpu burst cycle to be half which is considered as an alpha so it is given by the formula shown in the step number 3 this this figure shows shows exponential averaging with alpha equal to half and t t not equal to 10 So here we have the example of exponential averaging. When the value of alpha equal to zero, uh, tau n plus one equal to tau n, which says recent history does not count for calculating the value of alpha. When alpha equal to one, tau n plus one equal to alpha into t t n. So only the actual last cpu burst cycles will count for the value of tau so if we expand the formula it is it uh, looks like this as uh, shown in the slide since both alpha and 1 minus alpha are less than or equal to 1 each successive term has less weight than its predecessor so here we consider the Uh, preemptive version of shortest job first algorithm which is also known as shortest remaining time first algorithm 
so in, in this process we add the concept of varying arrival time of the different processes because we need this information to preempt the uh, processes so we consider the example shown in slide number 7 with four processes and arrival time and bus times are also shown there so here at time 0 P1 is the process which is available in the ready queue so cpu is allocated to that process because at zero time only p1 process has arrived then when cpu completes one cycle then second process p2 has arrived and its burst cycle is 4 millisecond whereas the remaining burst cycle of p1 is 7 milliseconds so p2 is having less burst cycle compared with p1 so p2 is allocated with the cpu first then at time 2 we have p3 arriving then the burst cycle of p3 is 9 okay Uh, and burst cycle of uh, p1 is uh, 7 so we are continuing with p2 only then at uh, time 3 we have one more process coming in p4 with the burst cycle of 5 so the burst cycles of when we compare the burst cycle of p1 p3 p4 p4 is having the less burst cycle so p4 is allocated with the cpu first so once it completes then among p1 and p4 no sorry pa, among p1 and p3 the shortest cpu burst cycle is with p1 that is 7 milliseconds so that is allocated with the cpu first then at the end p3 is allocated with the cpu but if you see the average waiting time which is uh, sum of all the waiting times of individual processes divided by 4 which happens to be 6.5 millisecond which is comparatively less than uh, any other algorithms so this is considered to be the best optimal solution among all the algorithms next scheduling algorithm is known as priority scheduling a priority is associated with the process here and the cpu is allocated to the process with the uh, highest priority equal priority processes are scheduled in first come first serve order we assume that the lower number represents the higher priority and this <coughs> priority may be internal or external internal priority is based on the processes time limits processes memory requirements and the number of open files external priority of a process depends upon the criteria that are selected outside the operating system like importance of a process type and amount of fund paid to the process this priority scheduling comes in two uh, alga two variants preemptive and non preemptive shortest job first is considered to be uh, preemptive priority scheduling algorithm and the priority considered here is inverse of predicted next cpu burst cycle uh, there is one disadvantage of priority scheduling is the starvation a process that is ready to run but waiting for cpu can be considered as a blocked and this is called as the starvation that is normally a lower priority processes never get the cpu for their execution and this is called as the starvation because it is observed that in heavily loaded computer systems lower priority processes keeps on waiting for a very long time this uh, uh, this problem can be solved using a technique called as aging it is a technique of gradually increasing the priority of the processes that are waiting in the queue for a longer period of time so as gradually you increase the priority and uh, based on their priority they will get a chance to execute they will get a chance to run their process for that cpu cycle consider an example of priority scheduling shown in slide number 9 which consists of five processes such as p1 p2 p3 p4 with their burst time and priority shown in the table so according to the table process p1 is having the first priority as we said lowest number represents the highest priority the cpu allo is allocated to the process p2 first then priority 2 is 
given to process P5. So next CPU allocation is to the process P5. Then third priority is the process P1 with a burst time of 10 millisecond. So CPU is switching to process P1. The fourth priority is for process P3. Then CPU is allocated to that. At the end, uh, process P4 will, P4 will get a CPU cycle and it is shown by a Gantt chart in the figure of slide number. Thank you all.